Hey, uh, welcome to Digital Asset News. So today, what I want to talk to you about real quick was uh, every time we think we know what the market is going to do, it does the exact opposite. And uh, this month has been no different. And there was a nice little chart that we like to pull up. And we take a look at just how bad September could have been. And it seems like, and we've been talking about this for quite some time on the show, not just this show, but many shows and multiple different people across the spectrum as well. Just how September is historically one of the worst months, not in just in crypto, the crypto markets, but in traditional finance as well. And so far, and it has not lived up to the hype, which is, I will take it actually. And so far, this being uh, September 16th, we're looking at 2.4% up for the month. Now, does that mean that we can't crash down and have a, a horrible month? No, but so far it's holding up and it's been quite resilient. And if we take a look over, taking a look from 2010 all the way to 2023, historically speaking, there's only two months that are pretty darn red over time. And those two months are August and September. You can see these things right here. And of course, if we take a look at it, exactly how it is, August is not near as bad as September has been historically. And we can see here, this is 2010, looking at 2011, negative 40%, uh, negative 20%. This is back in 2014. A couple of green months here and there, but I'm not gonna bore you with the details, but this is what everybody thought. People also thought, or are still thinking, that we'll see a recession by end of Q4, potentially Q1 of 2024. We have seen that there's a lot of different predictions that are out there, and that's all they are. There are predictions. So this is why I like my strategy moving forward, because every time we think we know what it's going to do, the market rears up and smacks us right in the head and says, guess what? I'm going to do something totally different. So for right now, I'm glad I didn't panic and sell everything because, you know, September is going to be so awful. So far, so good. So that's what we have. And I'm pretty happy with uh, how things are going. Also, there's another criteria we take a look at which is with Bitcoin and money supply. And this is uh, from the website, look into bitcoin.com. It's a free website. There's all the different charts for Bitcoin are free, but the macro charts you have to sign up and pay for. I don't have a link for you. Uh, I just have look into Bitcoin. I think there's a, you can, you can find it on the, on the possibly every show I do just about, but uh, I don't have any kind of uh, affiliation with them or anything like that. But we take a look here is the US money, US M2 money supply versus Bitcoin year over year. And this is Bitcoin year over year change. And we can see that, you know, as the money supply goes up, it's like a lag factor. And of course, this is year over year, so it's a little bit different. But we can see that when the money supply goes up, then, many, then the price of Bitcoin goes up because there's so much liquidity in the system. And then, of course, things go down. But one thing I noticed recently is that even though we've had a year over year change, consistently going all the way back. This is November 30th, 2022 to today. The government has, is doing quantitative tightening and yet we don't see a massive drop off for Bitcoin currently. As a matter of fact, if we take a look here, you know, over time, Bitcoin year over year has been doing pretty good, which goes against what most people would say about liquidity. And actually, if we take a look over here, M2 money supply, going all the way back to the Genesis block, 2010, 2009, excuse me. Well, it doesn't go back that far. I didn't put it back here. We can see that the money supply in red, I mean, has gone up and has actually been a lockstep with Bitcoin. Bitcoin's had their peaks and valleys. What we can see over here, November 21, remember that? Ah, oh, it was a great month. Everything was happy. No one had anything negative to say on Twitter. It was awesome. And everybody was in profit. But you can see that as the actual money supply peaks over here and then starts to drop off, in all honesty, October, November, December, from December, as we started to drop off all the way today or until June, we were up 80% for Bitcoin. So it shows that it can be done and that even though we are missing the liquidity of uh, the almighty government printing a bunch of money, I think things are still on the right track. So there is the positive parts for 
the crypto market. And then also, uh, we started this, it was a little uh, experiment for dollar cost averaging. What I want to do is just show everybody week by week how you could profit as time went on, just dollar cost averaging, $10 per week starting on September 1st, 2023. And we started this, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago. And so tomorrow, what I wanted to go over with you tomorrow when we do this, I'm not going to do this today, but I need to go over about the fees because you're buying, if you're buying crypto at $10 a week, and this is of course for the every man, I didn't want to say, hey, buy $1,000 a day because no one can, very few people can do that. But 10 bucks a week, I think there's people out there that can do that. So I want to show just about the fees, what I'm doing currently to eliminate those fees or reduce them drastically. And then uh, also the fees of transfer in the cold storage devices, because we're always talking about that's what the rules are. So we'll talk about that tomorrow. I'll show you what, what cryptos are actually in profits or actually just holding water and which ones are sucking. And then also as a reminder, uh, we did this about a month ago and we just showed that, hey, if you, know, you put $10 a week, if we take a look at the four-year cycles all the way back in uh, starting in 2019 in August, you know, you'd be up pretty massively, just 10 bucks a week investing into some basic cryptos of the day, Dogecoin, Matic, ADA. Look at that. You would have invested under a grand and with Matic, you would have had 44,000. So that's the whole point of this moving forward. I think that uh, people can do quite well, uh, but not financial advice. I'm just showing you what I'm investing into and how I'm doing it. Uh, and just as a side note, I'm not just doing 10 bucks a day or a week, but it's something that I think everybody can ascribe, ascribe to. All right. Let me just think about that in the comments section. Then also some good news is this. Let me, let me highlight this one. It's a good one. So I don't know if you guys have taken a look at your portfolios lately. I'm just going to guess you have. Uh, TonCoin just came out of nowhere and uh, it's up 25% for the week. And if you don't know TonCoin, it's, it's actually about to break into the top 10. Go figure, right? 13% the last uh, 24 hours, and then it's 25% over seven days. And it looks like it's got market cap of over seven, almost hitting at almost 8 billion. And it's going to pass Solana quite soon. And the question is, what the heck is TonCoin and why is it? So I just put a tweet out, just said, this is the whole reason behind it. And this is the thing about, about markets and, and, and getting into different positions and getting out of positions and whatever you want to do is that, Again, once you think you know where the market is, who'd expect that ton coin, I don't know, 30, 60 days ago, would almost be in the top 10. And it's amazing what announcements and partnerships can do. So this is why. On September 14th, the ton coin foundation and Telegram, I don't know if you are aware of Telegram, 700 million people are using it. Uh, they announced they're, uh, they're going to partner up and there's going to be a crypto wallet called Ton Space, which gives access to their ecosystem. And why this is so big is because, like I said, 700 million people are using Telegram monthly. And you can just see that there's a huge amount of potential if just you get 10% of those people, 20%, 30%. And I thought about this. I go, well, now think about how many people are actually using Twitter on a daily basis and what that could do in which crypto, whatever Elon Musk decides for crypto payments on Twitter is going to be. That will be a kingmaker. I can't tell you what it is. I have my guests. I have my, my guesses as to what it could be, but it's, it's irrelevant. They're all guesses. They're all guesses. But uh, I will tell you, once that gets picked, because <clears throat> as Elon Musk says, X is going to be an everything app, just like how you have WeChat in China. So you're going to be able to do payments. You're going to do loans. You're going to be able to do... Uh, rentals and all different types of things. So at some point, they're going to need some type of payment. And I don't think that the traditional dollar bill, especially globally, is going to be used. So I guess it's, it's uh, up in the air. Let me know what you think, which, which one it could be. I will look into it. But uh, those are the good parts. And then also, uh, as far as like usability, here's another good, good, uh, good segment. Uh, Coinbase's base blockchain which just came out a couple months ago, base. It doesn't have a token, you can't buy it. It's built on optimism. Hits a record high for daily transaction. And I think these are the things that we really need to start paying attention to as opposed to just taking a look at 
is the price going up? Is the price going up? No, well, it's junk. Is this happening? No, well, it's trash. Or is the price going up? It's awesome. Pet Bitcoin? All right, it's good. I don't think that's the way we should be looking at things. I think we should be looking at things like this. So this is why, or this is what's happening. So base from Coinbase saw almost 2 million transactions on Thursday. And that's higher than Arbitrum and Optimism combined. Uh, it's not because of DeFi. It's not because of NFT marketplace. It has nothing to do with that. It's because of one thing and one thing only, or a significant portion, I guess you could call it, is that app called FriendTech. You can do it. It's kind of Ponzi-ish, me personally. Some people love it. I don't get it. But, uh, I mean, if you want to go in there and you want to you know, pay for somebody's keys and then uh, upgrade and then have them in there, I'm just telling you, I don't, I don't think it's going to last, but I've been wrong before. So just so you know, FriendTech is built on base and calls itself the marketplace for your friends. I don't know how many social media platforms we need, but that's irrelevant to what I think. It's what you think and what you think is best for you. So when I see that these types of projects are going off, it's because they're being used. People actually using this blockchain. I think there's three things we should always be looking at. We should be looking at DAP Radar, L2 Beat, and we should take a look at DeFi Llama. What, I'm, what I mean here is, with DAP Radar, it, it doesn't really have too much to do with the actual price per se, but it, unique active wallets and which ones are doing well and which ones are falling off. And we talked about Kai Ching and Nier and Farmer's World. And this is, these are things that, that are just, well, some are games and some are wallets, and some are DeFi pro projects, and, and of course, Pancake Swap. But you can just see that these are the things that are actually being used, all these things. So the other stuff that's, that's out there, I think it's all, all a bunch of, traders manipulating wash trading and really nobody's really doing much with them at all these are things that are actually being used now are they being used like uh, massively like they should no probably not but you can see the things that we just talked about friend tech uniswap hey sweat economy sweat coin pancake swap atomic assets and so on and so forth these are things that are actually being used you can break this down by the balance things that are locked up unique active wallet and you can wallet percentage and volume and on top of that l2b is, of course, another, another great one to take a look at just to see which ones, which L2s are actually being utilized for uh, on Ethereum. And are they, are they optimistic or ZKs? And we're going to see that, you know, number one, Arbitrum. ZK Sync, here's base making its way up, 387 million. Market share, 4%. But these are the things we should, I think, really be looking at. I mean, Loop Ring, I haven't heard of that in a long time, but looks like people are using it. Not that much, though. 100 million as opposed to Arbitrum's 5 billion or so. Uh, Polygon, yeah. And then lastly, DeFi Llama. Who's locking things up? Who has their funds locked in these DeFi protocols? And which chains are they? You can see them. Base, Solana, 1.28. Optimism, 1.6. Polygon, almost 2%. Avalanche, which is pretty good, 2.1. Arbitrum, this is why I invest in Arbitrum, 4.7. Binance Smart Chain, seven. Tron, who'd have thunk it, right? Well, if you need a stable coin, Tron's your place, especially in Southeast Asia. And then, of course, Ethereum, the big lion share. So if we take a look at these things, I think this is the thing we should look at. But I could be wrong, but this is where I'm going for. So let me know what you think about that. And that is, that is that concludes the good part of the news. If you'd like to leave now, I don't blame you, because now we'll get into the negative part. And this is the thing that I think that... Uh, it's best to take a look at because quite honestly, if I just throw you sunshine, you'd be like, well, that's great. Let me start selling everything uh, so I can roll into this crypto market. I think you have to be aware that there's some negative parts to crypto and what's going on. Here's one of them. So this was from Singapore 2049 and they interviewed uh, CZ Binance. And he gives a great response, which is, they're like, well, you know, what is impeding us? What is stopping us from really taking off? And CZ said this, it's the banks, man. It's the banks and our fiat on ramps. Here's exactly what he says. So CZ thinks a key problem in expanding crypto is reached the lack of resources that help convert cash into crypto and vice versa. Also known as Operation Choke Point 2.0, which is essentially where the governments lean on the banks and say, look, we don't want you to work with those, those dirty, dirty crypto people. And we don't want you to be a fiat on-ramp. And of course, people will say, 
We don't need them. Well, we do need them in some way. At some way, we have to take the cash that we have and get paid, the fiat, and turn into crypto in some way. There has to be an on-ramp. So the challenge is to bring the next 100 million users in crypto. Today, today, to be frank, it's just fiat. With tightening regulations in the earlier parts of this year, we've seen a lot of traditional institutions that used to provide fiat ramp channels pull away. Now, I'm not 100% for sure that this is just because of what's going on all around Binance and the Department of Justice and their investigation into Binance itself and maybe the other banks globally are pulling away or if this is rampant across multiple, multiple exchanges, but I know that this is an issue. So if we think that this is gonna be smooth sailing, it's not. And the thing that hinder us, that is a hindrance to us is the governments that stand in the way. And I've always said, I know it's a very, not very popular opinion, but there has to be some kind of regulation out there which shows us, which says, look, this is what, <laughs> this is what currency is, <coughs> excuse me. This is what crypto, this is what a, a security is. This is what property is, just to give us some clarity. And we can't get that with the current regime in place. It's just not gonna happen unless Gary Gensler actually steps down and he's one of the few ones that is really putting themselves in the way. So there's that part. Then also, I think this is the biggest one. Is people losing their crypto? Um, and people, this, there's so many hacks. It's just, it's, it's, it's rampant. Like I remember in, in, in 2017, I mean, before we had DeFi, it wasn't this bad. I mean, people would like, you know, they'd have some hot wallets and of course, you know, we'd have a lot of, we'd have different exchanges that would screw up. But now it just seems like every day you just hear people just losing their crypto left and right. And I don't think there's any, be, there's going to be a massive, mass adoption if people can't do this. This is Jason Casper, got a YouTube channel, check him out. And uh, he said that he lost uh, 700,000 worth of crypto. Watch the YouTube video. Now, he put it on a hot wallet, and I know it's not part of the rules. I'm not here to judge anybody, but that's what happened. And the thing was is that these hot wallets, it seems like I use hot wallets. I use a MetaMask wallet but I don't leave $700,000 in there. Use it for what it is for a small amount. It's like the wallet that you have in your pocket. You're not gonna carry your entire net worth in your wallet, in your pocket. You probably wanna keep your entire net worth in assets, maybe the banks, not for sure. Maybe some kind of storage, like cold storage. But these things happen and this guy is, uh, you know, he's been around for quite some time. So it, there's something like this, then Mark Cuban had the same thing happen yesterday, and it looks like he lost 870,000. Now, to be fair, uh, Mark Cuban losing 870,000 is not as big of a deal as if we lose 870,000. And I'm sure he's like, well, there's my valet money out the window. But it just happens more and more and more. And the reason is, is because whatever it is with these smart contracts and the way that, that they integrate into these Ethereum wallets, and, a car, and of course, it's not just Ethereum. It's, it's across a wide swath of different cryptos that are out there. If you have any kind of like uh, an airdrop token you don't understand or an NFT that's just there magically, don't interact with it. Because every time you do that and you sign the transaction, then of course, these scammers, they put it in there for a reason and are able to drain your entire wallet. And I don't know exactly how it works. I am not a tech person, but I'm just saying that the way this happened with Mark and apparently with Jason is the same way. They signed some kind of transaction and it screwed everything up. And then of course, on top of that, I just got this from Rick Middleton. This is on the Cardano network. It looks like Earth Node 775 has been stolen. So Earth Node is from World Mobile Token. So it's not just, and I don't know exactly how this one happened, but you can just see the issue here. You know, I mean, we want people to come in and, and we're like, yeah, it's super easy to use, but uh, you know, don't sign any transactions. And there's these NFTs that'll look like kind of like what you bought. And also there's some airdrops that could be worth something. <coughs> Excuse me. So I just don't see us really hitting some mass, mass adoption. This is all speculation for quite some, some time until we can figure out this issue because when people start losing their life savings or just a big chunk of money, it doesn't work. Sorry. 
that's how it is. <coughs> so let me know what you think about in the comment section. Hold on. Hey, I did pretty good. Was coughing all night. Doing pretty, doing all right so far. But lastly, and lastly, the bad news, I guess. Rec League. Uh, I did a video about this. This is the first AAA ranked <coughs> fighting game that I, uh, I got into. And, and the NFTs were not expensive. It was like 50 bucks. But then when I went to go mint everything and go with the process, <coughs> I did a video on it. And essentially it came down to this. Like you can mint some and you can build this mech and you can start fighting, but to get in the game, you have to verify a government ID to play the game. And I'm like, are we in the right, I mean, universe? Is this what, we're, what we wanna do? To play a game, we gotta have a, a verify a government ID so that can be tracked on online and who knows if there's a, <clears throat> a glitch or a, or a leak. I'm like, you know, if we keep doing this stuff, uh, I mean, that Web3 gaming that I said was going to be the next big thing, it's not. It's going to crash and play to earn dead as well. So uh, you can watch that video. I linked in the description. It's me for like 20 minutes and dispo. Well, it's me for like 10 minutes explaining how to go through it. But then the end, I'm like, you got to be kidding me. There's not a chance in heck I would do that. And that's it. So look, I know that last part probably wasn't uh, the most upbeat, but it's the truth. And uh, that's it for today's news. So if you want to stick around, we'll do a little Q&A. If you got to take off, take off. Thanks so much. Like and subscribe and all that good stuff.